Okay, so in this video, I want to give a very short heuristic proof of L'Hopital's rule when the limit yields a 0 over 0 case. I will also make one more assumption that x0 is some real number. We know that x0 is allowed to be positive or negative infinity, but in this argument I'll assume it's a real number. Now, if you think about this, as x is approaching x0, so as x gets closer and closer to x0, f of x by assumption is getting closer and closer to 0. So we can assume that f of x0 is simply 0. And similarly, as x is approaching x0, g of x is approaching 0. So we can also assume that g of x0 is equal to 0. So now let me do something that may seem silly at first, but will quickly become interesting. So I will simply rewrite f of x as f of x minus 0 and do the same for g of x. g of x is of course g of x minus 0. But now I can replace 0 by f of x 0 on the numerator and I can replace 0 on the denominator by, of course, g of x is 0. And here's where it gets interesting. So here, as x is approaching x 0, we have f of x minus f of x 0, the change in y in the function f. On the denominator, we have g of x minus g of x 0, the change in y, but in g. Well, if we think of the derivative, which is ultimately what we want to happen. We want f to be transformed into its derivative and g to be transformed into its derivative. But all we have here are changes in y. The derivative will be obtained when we take the limit of the change in y over the change in x. Well, if you think about this, we can naturally make this happen. We have the point x0. Say, just for argument's sake, that x is slightly bigger than x0, then, well, the change in x, delta x, is going to be x minus x0. And so what we can do now is multiply top and bottom of our fraction by the same thing. This will be a 1, and we'll multiply by 1 over delta x, to have a delta y over delta x, top and bottom. as 1 over x minus x0 over itself is simply 1. We're not cheating, we're not changing the expression, but now let's multiply through both expressions by 1 over x minus x0, or equivalently divide top and bottom by x minus x0, which is our delta x. So the numerator becomes f of x minus f of x0 over x minus x0 all over the same thing of course but instead of f, g. So g of x minus g of x0 over x minus x0. So if you think about this now, as x approaches x0, we have on top the change in y for f, the value of f at x minus the value of f at x0, so the change in y in f over 
the change in x, x minus x0. So, we have the change in y for f over the change in x, but as x is approaching x0, then x minus x0 is naturally approaching 0, so delta x is shrinking to 0. Therefore, the change in y over the change in x, as the change in x is approaching 0, will return, of course, the derivative of the function at the given point of interest, namely x0. The same thing can be said, of course, in the case of g. This will be approaching g prime of x0. Therefore, the limit, in this case, as the numerator is approaching the derivative of f at x0, and the denominator is approaching the derivative of g at x0, should be equal to the limit as x approaches x0 of f prime of x over g prime of x. And of course, if you write this backwards, it may be a little clearer. As x is approaching x0, if everything is nice, f prime of x should be approaching f prime of x0. And as x is approaching x0, if everything is nice again, g prime of x should be approaching g prime of x0. Same thing in both cases. So this is why we can justify that this limit should be equal to this one, but if we work our way back up, we get the original limit. And that is the heuristic argument. And you can see, when x approaches a given value, say x0, and f of x over g of x, both, well, f and g both shrink to 0, so the limit yields a 0 over 0 case, you can kind of see heuristically that L'Hopital's rule would apply as, in this case, L'Hopital's rule would say that you can still let x approach x0 and simply replace f by f prime, g by g prime, and this is exactly what we've arrived at. So hopefully this makes L'Hopital's rule even more intuitive.